She was born Amy Lyon in Swan Cottage near Neston, Cheshire, England. The daughter of Henry Lyon, a blacksmith who died when Emma was just two months old. She was baptised on the 12th of May, 1765. She was raised by her mother, the former Mary Kidd, later Cadogan and grandmother Sarah Kidd and received no formal education. She later went by the name of Emma Hart. With her grandmother struggling to make ends meet at the age of 60 and after her mother went to London in 1777, Emma began work at the age of 12 as a maid of the doctor Honoratus Lee Thomas, a surgeon working in Chester. Only a few months later, she was unemployed again and moved to London in the autumn of 1777. She started to work for the Budd family in Blackfriars, London and began acting at Drury Lane Theatre in Covent Garden. She also worked as a maid for actresses such as Mary Robinson. Emma next worked as a model and dancer at the Goddess of Health for James Graham, a Scottish quack doctor. At 15, Emma met Sir Henry Featherstone Hugh, who hired her for several months as a hostess and entertainer at a lengthy stag party at Harry's Upper Country Estate in the South Downs. She is said to have danced nude on the dining table nightly. He took Emma as a mistress but frequently ignored her in favour of drinking and hunting with his friends. Emma soon befriended the dull but sincere Honourable Charles Francis Greville. It was about late June to early July 1781 that she conceived a child by Harry Featherstone Hugh. Francis Greville took her as his mistress on condition that the child be fostered out. Once the child, Emma Carew, was born, she was removed and raised by her great-grandmother and subsequently deposited with Mr John Blackburn, schoolmaster, and his wife in Manchester. Francis Greville kept Emma in a small house at Edgware Row, Paddington Green, at this time a village on the rural outskirts of London. At his request, she changed her name to Mrs Emma Hart, dressed in modest outfits in subdued colours. He arranged for Emma's mother to live with her as housekeeper and chaperone. He also taught Emma to enunciate more elegantly and after a while started to invite some of his friends to meet her. Greville sent her to sit for his friend, the painter George Romney, who was looking for a new model and muse. It was then that Emma became the subject of many of his most famous portraits and became London's biggest celebrity. So began Romney's lifelong obsession with her. Emma became well known in society circles under the name of Emma Hart. She was witty, intelligent, a quick learner, elegant, and as paintings of her attest, extremely beautiful. Romney was fascinated by her looks and ability to adapt to the ideals of the age. In 1783, Greville needed to find a rich wife to replenish his finances 
and found a fit in the form of the 18-year-old heiress. Henrietta Middleton. Emma would be a problem as he disliked being known as her lover, this having become apparent to all through her fame in Romney's artworks. And his prospective wife would not accept him as a suitor if he lived openly with Emma. To be rid of Emma, he persuaded his uncle, younger brother of his mother, Sir William Hamilton, British envoy to Naples, to take her off his hands. He suggested to Sir William that Emma would make a very pleasing mistress, assuring him that once married to Henrietta Middleton, he would come and fetch Emma back. Sir William, then 55 and newly widowed, had arrived back in London for the first time in over five years. Emma was thus sent to Naples, supposedly for six to eight months, little realising that she was going as the mistress of her host. Emma came to understand that he had cast her off. She was furious when she realised what Greville had planned for her, but eventually started to enjoy life in Naples and responded to Sir William's intense courtship. They fell in love. Sir William forgot his plans to take her as a temporary mistress and Emma moved into his apartments, leaving her mother downstairs in the ground floor rooms. Emma wasn't able to attend court yet, but Sir William took her to every other party, assembly and outing. They were married on the 6th of September, 1791, having returned to England for this purpose, and Sir William having gained the King's consent. She was 26, and he... 60. The newly married couple returned to Naples after two days. Lady Hamilton became a close friend of Queen Maria Carolina, sister of Marie Antoinette and wife of Ferdinand I of Naples and soon acquired fluency in both French and Italian. She was also a talented amateur singer. At one point the Royal Opera in Madrid tried to engage her for a season but that offer was turned down. As wife of the British envoy, Emma welcomed Nelson, who had been married to Fanny Nisbet for about six years at this point, after his arrival in Naples on the 10th of June 1793, when he came to gather reinforcements against the French. When Nelson set sail for Sardinia on the 15th of September, after only five days in Naples, it was clear that he had fallen in love with Emma. After four years of marriage, Emma had despaired of having children with Sir William, although she wrote of him as the best husband and friend. It seems likely that he was sterile. She tried to persuade him to allow her daughter to come and live with them as her mother's niece, but he refused. Nelson returned to Naples five years later, on the 22nd of September, 1798, a living legend, after his victory at the Battle of the Nile with his stepson, Josiah Nesbitt. Before his arrival, Emma had written a letter passionately expressing her admiration for him. Nelson even wrote of Emma to his increasingly estranged wife. Emma and Sir William escorted Nelson to their home. Emma nursed Nelson under her husband's roof and arranged a party with 1,800 guests to celebrate his 40th birthday. 
on the 29th of September. After the party, Emma became Nelson's secretary, translator and political facilitator. They soon fell in love and began an affair. Hamilton showed admiration and respect for Nelson and vice versa and the affair was tolerated. By November, gossip from Naples about their affair reached the English newspapers. Emma Hamilton and Horatio Nelson were famous. Emma advised the Queen on how to react to the threats from the French Revolution. Queen Maria's sister, Marie Antoinette, had fallen victim to the revolution. In 1799, Naples was the scene of a strange revolution. Led by members of the aristocracy, the French troops were not welcome and the royal family fled to Sicily. From here, Nelson tried to help the royal family put down the revolutionaries. He had no support from the British government. He even allowed one of the leaders of the revolution to be executed for treason. Emma played an important role in helping to put an end to the revolution when she arrived off Naples with Nelson's fleet on the 24th of June, 1799. She acted as a go-between conveying messages from the Queen to Nelson and from Nelson to the Queen. Emma became pregnant around April 1800. Nelson, Emma, her mother and William travelled together, taking the longest route back to Britain, eventually arriving in Yarmouth to a hero's welcome on the 6th of November 1800. Upon arrival in London on the 8th of November, the three of them took suites at Nerot's Hotel after a missed communication from Nelson to his wife about receiving the party at their home. Lady Nelson arrived and they all dined at the hotel with Fanny deeply unhappy to see Emma pregnant. The affair soon became public knowledge and to the delight of the newspapers, Fanny did not accept the affair as placidly as Sir William. Emma was winning the media war at that point and every fine lady was experimenting with her look. Nelson contributed to Fanny's misery by being cruel to her when not in Emma's company. Infuriated by Fanny's handing him an ultimatum to choose between them, Nelson chose Emma and decided to take steps to formalise separation from his wife. He never saw her again after being hustled out of town by an agent. While he was at sea, Nelson and Emma exchanged many letters using a secret code to discuss Emma's condition. Emma kept her first daughter, Emma Carew's existence, a secret from Nelson, while Sir William continued to provide for her. Emma gave birth to Nelson's daughter, Horatia, on the 29th of January 1801. At 23 Piccadilly, she was taken the next day for care and hire of a wet nurse. Soon after this, the Prince of Wales, later King George IV, became infatuated with Emma, leading Nelson to be consumed by jealousy and inspiring a remarkable letter by Sir William to Nelson, assuring him that she was being faithful. 
By the autumn of the same year, upon Emma's advice, Nelson bought Merton Place, a small ramshackle house at Merton near Wimbledon. He gave her free reign with spending to improve the property, and her vision was to transform the house into a celebration of his genius. There they lived openly together with Sir William and Emma's mother in a menage a trois that fascinated the public. By the autumn of 1803, Sir William's health was declining. Soon afterwards, Sir William collapsed and on the 6th of April died in Emma's arms. Nelson had been offered a position of Commander-in-Chief of the Mediterranean Fleet and they rushed to have Horatia christened before he left. On her baptism record, her name was recorded as Horatia Nelson Thompson and her date of birth falsely recorded as the 29th of October 1800 in order to continue the pretense that she had been born in Naples. Nelson later wrote a letter explaining that the child was an orphan left to his care and protection. Nelson left to fight in the Napoleonic Wars, leaving Emma pregnant with their second child. Although neither knew it at the time, she was desperately lonely and preoccupied with attending to turn Merton Place into the grand home Nelson desired. The child, a girl named Emma, died about six weeks after her birth in early 1804. She reportedly distracted herself by gambling and succumbed to binges of heavy drinking and eating and spending lavishly. Emma received several marriage proposals during 1804, all wealthy men, but she was still in love with Nelson and believed that he would become wealthy with prize money and leave her rich in his will, and so she refused them all. After a brief visit to England in August 1805, Nelson once again had to return to service. Emma received letters from him on the 1st, 7th and 13th of October. On the ship, he wrote a note, intended as his will, requesting that in return for his legacy to king and country that they should give Emma ample provision to maintain her rank in life and that his adopted daughter Horatia Nelson Thompson use in future the surname of Nelson only. On the 21st of October 1805, Nelson's fleet defeated a joint Franco-Spanish naval force at the Battle of Trafalgar. Nelson was seriously wounded during the battle and died three hours later. When the news of his death arrived in London, a messenger was sent to Merton Palace to bring the news to Lady Hamilton. She later recalled, They brought me word, Mr. Whitby from the Admiralty, show him indirectly, I said. He came in and with a pale countenance and faint voice said, We have gained a great victory. Never mind your victory, I said. My letters, give me my letters. Captain Whitby was unable to speak, tears in his eyes. A deathly paleness over his face made me comprehend him. I believe I gave a scream and fell back, and for ten hours I could neither speak nor shed a tear. Emma lay in her bed prostrate with grief for many weeks. 
after receiving visitors and tears. It was some weeks before she heard that Nelson's last words were of her and that he begged the nation to take care of her and Horatia. The funeral was lavish, costing the state £14,000, but Emma was excluded. She spent 1806 to 1808 keeping up appearances, continuing to spend on parties and alteration to her home to make it a monument to Nelson. Goods that Nelson had ordered arrived and had to be paid for. The annual annuity of £800 from Sir William's estate was not enough to pay off the debts and keep her lifestyle, and Emma fell deeply into debt. She moved from Claridge's Street to a cheaper home at 136 Bond Street, but could not bring herself to relinquish Merton. Her brother William blackmailed her into giving him money, and her mother's sister's family, the Connors, were also expecting handouts. Within three years, Emma was more than £15,000 in debt and in June 1808, Merton failed to sell at auction. She was not completely without friends. Her neighbours had rallied and Sir John Perring hosted a group of influential finances to help organise her finances and sell Merton. It was eventually sold in April 1809. However, her lavish spending continued and a combination of this and the steady depletion of funds due to people fleecing her meant that she remained in debt, although unbeknownst to most people. Her mother died in January 1810. For most of 1811 and 1812, Emma was in a virtual debtor's prison and in December 1812 either chose to commit herself or was sentenced to a prison sentence at the King's Bench Prison in Southwark. Although she was not kept in a cell but to allow to live in rooms nearby with Horatia as part of the system whereby genteel prisoners could buy the rights to live within the rules, a three square mile area around the prison. In early 1813, she petitioned to the Prince of Wales, the government and friends, but all of her requests failed and she was obliged to auction off many of her possessions, including many Nelson relics at low prices. However, she continued to borrow money to keep up appearances. Public opinion turned against her after the letters of Lord Nelson to Lady Hamilton were published in April 1814. Emma was anxious to leave the country, but owing to the risk of arrest if she travelled on a normal ferry, she and Horatia hid from the creditors for a week after boarding a private vessel bound for Calais on the 1st of July 1814 with £50 in her purse. But soon she was deeply in debt again and suffering from long-standing health problems including stomach pain, nausea and diarrhoea. In November, they moved into a cheap flat. Emma started drinking heavily and taking laudanum. She died on the 15th of January 1815 at the age of 49. Henry Cadogan cared for the 14-year-old Horatia in the aftermath of Emma's death and paid for her travel to Dover. Emma's eldest daughter, Emma Carew, travelled Europe as a governess and ladies' companion. 
Horatia married the Reverend Philip Ward, had ten children, the first of whom was named Horatio Nelson and lived until 1881. Horatia never publicly acknowledged that she was the daughter of Emma Hamilton or Horatio Nelson. And this concludes the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please click the like button, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for future videos. Thank you.